I think there's a uh, there's a charm about the the era of hip hop that you hold dear, and like you say, Pervez, Dolby. We'll, we'll go into the other depths. You can check out the podcast of mm. the Dons that have been on. Yeah, man. You know, big up, tough Tim Twist. Big shout out to everybody who's been. Yeah, man. Um, it's the honesty that you guys hold. Yeah, and I think it's a generational thing. I th- honestly think it's refreshing, and it needs to be. It, I find it incredibly important that voices need to be spoken. Not everybody likes John Lydon because, you know, he's, you know, he's a, a, a totally different character to what he was when he was in Sex Pistols. But for his generation, I love that he speaks out. There ain't enough people speaking out about shit. And if something isn't right within a community or a scene, that needs to be brought to attention. Correct? Mm. It's few and far between nowadays outside of your guys' generation that people actually really are affected enough to actually say something about things like this and other stuff. You know what I mean? It's super important, isn't it? Well, of course it is. I mean, look, I mean, Dolby, Dolby back in the days, Dolby was good. You understand? It doesn't matter who was well, who was more well-known or more spoken. Huh. That is, nowadays, they, uh, that's not about me. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I'm not trying to get... Um, I'm not trying to be famous about, oh, I've done more than them and I had more mm. moves than them or that and this. It's not a thing about that. It's good to see Dolby and Pervez, me. Uh, and I don't, I can't see more other old school cats that's still in the scene. Actually, me and Dolby were elites back in the days. You understand what I'm saying? We was running things. Mm-hmm. He was doing his own thing. You understand what I'm saying? I was doing my own thing. I had my own crew. He had his own crew. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. London All Stars. And, you know, and I built up a crew. You understand what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. was actually, I was brought down Charing Cross. I, my last interview in um, All City, Steve's. Ah, uh, big said up Steve, it. yes. Uh, Flipsky, you know, Danny Francis' brother, yeah. DC Rock. Yeah, come on. His big up brother, Danny Francis yeah, as well. Man, Danny bad man. Francis, Ooh. love you, man. Bad boy, Popeye. Legend. You know it like a poet, baby doll. Oh. <laughs> So, you know, his brother Flipsky, right, me and him was hanging around, right, because they were in Zulu Rockers and Zulu Rockers slowly was breaking out, breaking uh-huh. up and all that. Uh-huh. And Flipsky knew, knew I was, I was a badass. You understand what I'm saying? Uh-huh. His mum was running Zulu Nation over this country. Did you know that? No. Anyway, Danny wow. Francis' his mum okay. was running things, you understand? And they had the Zulu book and everything else. And um, they wanted to one day go to Africa, right? And it was only four people. I was one, I think Flip was one, Danny was one, and there was another brother, I don't know who, mm-hmm. right? I don't remember, you know, other people were chosen or Danny. It wasn't yeah, about yeah. who was the best or whatever, but I know I was selected to go. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah. I used to work in my dad's kebab shop in Mare Street in 1983, 84, and this was around 84, but then That's my amazing. dad was very, very worried about sending me to Africa mm-hmm. And to do a little show and all that. And guess how much I was going to get? Come we on. was going to get a thousand pounds each in 1984. Which is a lot of money. Equivalent, maybe to 10, 20 grand now. That's right. You understand? I'm, I don't know, but if you, yeah. if you, I don't know. No, no, I'll go with that. Yeah. And it's a big, big money. And um, I was, my dad didn't believe it. He thought I was going to go either somewhere for three or four days and lie and said I was going to Africa. Because <laughs> one time I remember me and this brother called Kevin from Trailblazers. <laughs> These guys, trailblazers, obviously, Chrome Angels, yeah. right? And Kevin. Kevin, I know, I forgot his street name, but Kevin used to hang around with them and all that, right? And me and Kevin meant to go to France to catch up with Solo from Paris City Breakers. Nice. Because them cats were here already before <laughs> and all that. And, um, and I didn't know that I needed visa on my Turkish passport. I didn't have a uh, British passport. Mm-hmm. So we all got ready and all that. We went to either Victoria or Paddington to take the train and all that. And the guy looks at my passport, he goes, you ain't got no visa. I goes, what? What's a visa? And I was like, you, right? I go, what's a visa? He goes, you need a little stamp, right, to go to France and all. I goes, oh, fuck it, man, I can't go now. So I said, Kevin, don't worry, man, you need some more money. I gave him all my money for him to be safe yeah. down there, right? And I couldn't go. So he took the train. I said, you know, say hello to... Um, Solo and Nicholas and oh, all that. And Paris and Breakers. I couldn't go. I was so gutted. But were. anyway... Um, I stayed at his yard and all that. So this was the second day and all that. My mum and dad's worried and all shit like mm. that. So I had to go back to the Bureau de Exchange, right, to change some sterling into 
French money uh-huh. to go back home and say, if my mum asked me where you was last night, I was going to say I was in France and I just got back, look, French money, French money, <laughs> you, look, <laughs> believe me, believe me. Uh-huh. Man, I was, uh, I was out there, man, two, three days and all that. It was stupid of me not getting in touch with mum and dad and all that, let them know what I'm doing. But hey, that was you a youth see? then, you know. Yeah, man. Easy days. Um, we did have a little chat over a drink in the pub and we did talk about the era of uh, uh, the Cobbles, Charing Cross, <laughs> Covent Garden, uh, Aussie's Crew, Spider, a.k.a. Blue Business and yeah, yeah. all these amazing... Uh, first, first, real first generation. Mm. But got, and and uh, Big Up B-Boy documents as well, of course. Um, Mark made a very good point that Aussie's crew just does not get talked about enough. Mm. Does it? it just doesn't get it doesn't get the presence and in, no, in it conversations. No, enough, I'm it? afraid it doesn't. You know, when I first went to Covent, right, the first person who introduced me to go down Covent was Flexi. Pervez mentioned about this guy called Flexi. He's uh-huh. a body popper, uh-huh. not a breaker. Uh-huh. And you know, this guy used to dance with Pervez and all that with Cookie Crew. Mm-hmm. That this. There you go. I, he one time, right, when I was in Jedi's crew, he one time said to me, "There's this place down Covent." And all these like breakers, poppers, DJs, MC mm. graffiti writers, they all hang out around. I goes, where is this place, man? Take me down there. Mm. So one time he took me down there and the time when we went down there, right, and the only first people I see and the first crew I see was Floor Masters. That was Billy Business's crew. Legend. Yeah, Billy later on he was in Live to Break, obviously. Oh, but yeah. yeah, Billy Business and I think they were called Floor Masters. And I vividly mm. remember because I've got a photographic memory. You don't want to mess with me, man. Don't fuck with you the memory, You know why, man? man? Because I love, I love my shit. You mm. understand what I'm saying? When you love your shit, you can remember deep. Vividly, I remember they were wearing all red wetsuit top and bottoms with Adidas, red stripes, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's, right? And red stripes. They were they look like shell toes, but without the shell. That's right? hard. And they look wicked, man. Yeah. And I looked around like this, and it was so packed out. Beautiful. I went the first in Covent. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I, went, I don't know who was the first in Covent. Yeah. You know, to me, in this game, it ain't about first being greedy in this game yeah. or clocking on before he clocks on or he clocks on. I knew my homework. You know, coming from a martial art background, it didn't, co- it didn't take me long to mm. suss out, you know, the authenticness about Wild Star, mm. Star Wars. That's all I needed to watch. Mm. It was such a God's gift. Me watching them... And then watching Breakdance, Beat Street and all that. I'm not dissing Beat Street or Breakdance, but you ain't touching no Star Wars or mm. Wild Star. Wild Star is like Babylon Aswad movie. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, brings the food. You see, even, oh man, you know, I, you know Babylon movie, right? When I can't sleep, I put that on. I, that that's is the beautiful. the only shit that I can sleep on, you Love understand? It. I can watch that movie from beginning to yeah. end. All day long, you understand what I'm yeah. saying? Without too much it. thinking, because you yeah, know man. it. Yeah. I love it, man. I look at, I just every time I watch it, I look at the curves. I study the curves, the shop fronts, the yeah. cars, and yeah, all that. Beautiful. That's where my background is, man. I yeah. love it. But um, you know um, what I'm trying to say here is um, I'm I'm really happy that you know um, you know Pervez Dolby's in the scene still. It doesn't matter even if even if we have ups and downs. Sometimes you need this little spice in the game. Yeah, because you and Dolby battled. You got you and Dolby battled. Well, you know that, I, that's well I, documented. That my well, let me tell you something. <laughs> since you mentioned that, all right. Since you mentioned that, that battle actually, you know, he probably think he won. Right, actually, it wasn't actually. I'll tell you how it went. Right, yeah. when the, that time I used to bun a lot. Right, and knowing that I was going to go to this jam. Right, mm. Clapham Common Urban Games. Right, mm. I remember I was there. Right, I remember. right, and I was bunning, right? I was bunning them times, right? And knowing that yeah. I might, n- I, if I bring my smoke down there, you know, it ain't going to be appropriate, you understand? Yeah, yeah. So what I've done, i decked down half a bottle of whiskey. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> and I brought my boom box with me with Terror Squad, the album, on a cassette. <laughs> That's right, Terror Squad, the album, 1999, come right? On, come and on. then, And the next minute, me and Perv, I saw Pervis judging and all what, not on all this, right? And then I waited for him when he finished his game and all this. Next minute, me and Pervis is walking. <clears throat> and then I heard, I see Dolby and all this. First I went, oh, yeah, 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 Dolby, you're right. He goes, yeah, 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 and all this. All I heard is, right, Dolby goes, check out these two little Mexicans walking around. <laughs> So anyway, right, then it just, I was, I was, I was <laughs> fucked in the head already. Because you was on the drink. Not that yeah. I can't stand myself, yeah. I can walk, yeah. I know what I'm doing. But <sighs> when, it, if you're going to ask me to break, half finishing half a bottle of whiskey, because I wanted to drink that, 
knowing that I might not smoke over there so I can have a good time. Yeah, Get yeah, tipsy, yeah, yeah. go down there. Anyway, so I think we started, we started kind of like arguing and all that and then it ended up that, right? Now, we started battling. I said, there's no moves. You can't repeat moves, right? And then he goes, there's no rules in this game or whatever. I won't go through that. But anyway, we started battling and all that, right? But now you can't, you can't, as Dobie, come up and say, right, the battle's finished and I won. Crowd decides and all whatnot. And all. You can't, he stopped the battle. He stopped the battle claiming that he won. <laughs> now, you can't stop the battle. Now, you can't say the crowd because the crowd was on his side. If you saw him, his crowd, he was going, oh, Dolby, 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 Dolby. That ain't a battle. Do you understand what I'm saying now? That was, when was that? 22 Two, years 2001. ago? 2001. Right. Mm -hmm. And check out this video. You're going to be busting on this. Mm -hmm. Right. And this was just three, four months ago. Mm -hmm. Now, if you watch that flavor, you see that flavor and that. Okay. You, you can't compare it. Now, if, now I don't want to say that, but I don't want to say to Dolby, yo, hit down now and match this yeah. you understand i mean i know a lot a lot of people are going to point me out here you understand what i'm saying and this is nice flow and all this because mm -hmm. even dolby said to me in paddington art oh, he goes boy i didn't even ask dolby that yo did you check my shit out bro mm -hmm. did you i don't hint things like that me and dolby is cool yeah, yeah you guys but go back what i loved when dolby came out humbly that's what i love about him yeah. when he's humble he loves me man because mm -hmm. he knows i'm humble right mm -hmm. and he said to me hell it that little thing you've yeah. done it was nice I went, it worked i went I went, thank you, Dolby. Love you. Yeah, yeah. You guys <laughs> it did work. And again, yeah, man. You know, it was, and I such never history. ever, I never ever, Dolby time to time posted them things and all that. I never ever re um, retaliated with it, never dissed him or nothing. But the whole thing, since I've done this interview, I walked in there with a half a bottle of whiskey, you know, right? And obviously, when you're going to battle someone like that, you've got to be at battle really, really you've got to be really, really sober. But I never ever told no one. I did tell Dolby. Dolby, Dolby one day, actually, about uh, 10 years after that, when hmm. he, had a, he had a little uh, dips and dabs with Renegade's friend and he had a fight or whatever, and he was living down Turnpike Lane right. with a friend called Corrosive. Right. We was hanging around and we was practicing together and all that, and this, me and Dolby's cool. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And um, we're adults, man, you understand? Yeah. So me and Dolby's cool. And he, Dolby bought a laptop one day <laughs> to my hat <laughs> store and watching the same battle. We're watching our battle, really? ourselves. Really? That humble we was. Yeah. You can ask Dolby. Dolby bought his laptop, right? And we're watching our battle, yeah. right? Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. Yeah. And I goes to him, and I can't hear no volume because there was a bit of swearing and all that, right? Yeah. Dolby went, I goes, I goes to him, where's the volume, though? He goes, the volume's fucked, well. Because I know he didn't want me to, he didn't want to hear, and I didn't want to hear the <laughs> little yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we watched our own thing battling. <laughs> <laughs> who who can do that? That's actually humbleness, really. But um, I really think there's intruding. something something so uh, beautiful that two OGs can sit there, almost like almost like you know you're sitting on a porch with your yeah, moonshine. Yeah. Dolby knows this. You've got the laptop. His laptop down, yeah, right? And I'll find, I found him very humble to do that. Yeah. You understand? And we're not we're not kids, man. You know, what I mean, that was that's a memory lane thing. But if yeah. it was, he, I'm not saying that I lost that battle. But um, what it was is you can't, you know. You can't stop the battle and say, right, that's it. Crowd decision and that and this. I love Dolby. Dolby's an MC as well. You know, he's done a little MC and topped it yeah, up and all that. Made it look yeah, like yeah. as if he thrashed me. But no, nah, man, I done that little clip three months ago, man. Man's still going hot, you know. <gasps> I ain't calling, bro. You're my bedroom. But man's raw, you know, <laughs> still. <laughs> I remember seeing you at uh, Fresh 97. I obviously, like you're saying, down at Clapham Common. Um, and there's just... I've, I've said it before to a lot of the gut OGs that come on here, but there's certain names that are a, a sign of assurance that you're just going to have a great time. Um, and when Hallett's in the building, when Lift the Breaks in the building, you know, these are, these are, these are seal of approvals to any venue and event. It, it, it was such a... Yeah. I, and I remember Fresh 97 being so significant because... Yeah, of a, do you remember that, that it was like a massive all-star mm. Danny Price was... I mean... I can't even, I mean, I've got the video somewhere as well, to be fair. Yeah, man. Just yeah, a yeah. golden, golden moment. It's on YouTube, moment. actually. It was very nice laid out. Yeah. Blue Eyes laid that out nice. Yeah. I mean, Big up Blue Eyes, yes. when, when, when Dolby was around Turnpike Lane, you know, Dolby and me, we're, we're cool. We might sound and look like rivals and all that, but, you know, it was like that probably back in the days yeah. and all that. But now we're, we're big men, you know what I mean? I mean, I wouldn't, mm. I wouldn't turn, I'm going to talk behind uh, Dolby's back or whatever and all this, but... Um, you know, I'm still rocking. You understand what I'm saying? And yeah. and like I said, it, I'm 54 
and I can push this shit on till 60, 62. The mm. fact that I can is because, you see, passion and love, when you love, you, when you love this and treat this like a choreography, because power moves, you can't, you can't put it in a choreography style. You understand? Mm. It's, it's, you know, our shit is style. We bowing, dips and dabs like that, even like Purvis. Purvis, you know, Purvis... Pervez is good, you know. Mm. Pervez is really, really good. He's Bad really man. underrated. Yeah. He's, big he's underrated. Pervis yeah, he's time. big up Pervez, right? He's gone more hungrier like second time round, you understand? Mm. Because he used to do he used to do hip hop dancing too. Mm. So, you know, him be him top rocking, he can he can versatile it. Yeah, yeah. And you wouldn't even know he'd done yeah. hip hop dancing. See, he's got that advantage, you understand mm. what I'm saying? I can I can I can mimic all that. You understand what I'm saying? But you gotta do it in a b-boy manner. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You don't make it look like you're in Kidding Play. You yeah, understand yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I'm not yeah. trying to put you down, my brother. I love you to bits, you know. You know you're the top notch right now. And you, you did actually carry the live to break flag. You understand what I'm saying? Only the fact that I told you back in the days when you first, second time round me and you started, I said, you're going to know everything one day, bro, and you're going to take over. And what happened? You yeah, took, took over. over. You understand what I'm saying? Cypher King. Literally, it's true. Of course he's a Cypher King. I remember that very yeah. well. He's got yeah. ultimate energy. You know, you know what it is? He's got so much energy. And plus, if when you know how to manipulate with this game, mm. right? When you know how to manipulate this game, you, you know, you, you just go on. It's like playing a guitar, that a track that makes sense. You understand? That's how real raw b boy is. I mean, in this video that I do. Yeah, I love I, you said that. Yeah, man. So it's very, very important. It's yeah. very important. Uh -huh. That's how it is, man. Uh -huh. I mean, you know. Um, um, talk to me. Sorry, cut short. Uh, I'm, I'm very intrigued. Because again, you, you've got the original recipe, you've got the, the DNA, the first mm. generation mm. DNA of breakdancing mm. in London and UK. Mm. What was it like? Explain that feeling, explain the conditions, explain that environment uh, at Covent Garden when you got on those cobbles, when you got on the floor in, in Covent. And what were you up against? What were the things that you were up against? Because it was a very different time and you guys were learning as you go, but you knew the recipe. You knew what what you what what was expected. You knew what it was. But you mm. were working within those conditions. Explain to me those conditions and environments. Those conditions and environments was you know as crews back in the days, right? Eighty three, eighty four, around eighty five. You see, people in this country, right? People, the breakers in this country, we never had hate towards each other back in the days. Mm -hmm. No one did. It was more of who was better. Who can pull out that move that I can do better than you. You understand what I'm saying? There yeah. was, there was, you know, two cats can do the same moves. Like, say, for example, mm -hmm. windmills mm -hmm. and then drill a backspin. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, even a guy who don't know nothing about breaking would mm. point out one of them is doing it proper yeah. than the other. Yeah, yeah. It was that kind of um, competition. It wasn't about going around slagging people, you know that. Mm -hmm. I don't remember no crew went around slagging people or no guy would go around slagging. We knew each other because yeah. the whole thing was so new, yeah. right? Um, it was this, um, you know, we had this humbleness, we yeah. had this respect. Yeah. You know, from Covent Garden, we was hanging around Covent Garden and there was Charing Cross that people used to travel through. And when we used to go Charing Cross, and people from Charing Cross, breakers used to come doing their thing from there and would pass by each other and say, yo, have you seen that? Hmm. What are they up to? Have, hmm. Who's there? And they would say to me, who's there? You know, so we don't miss out nothing. You understand what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And as a dancer back in the days, I mean, um, you know what? We would we would look look around. We would look around who's, who's doing what, hmm. you know, who was down, which crews, what area. And... Um, you know, um, and the, and the centre and the centre that we found the little practice ground as well around Charing Cross. Yeah, that's Obviously, Purvis, Dolby, yeah. you know, Dolby and Demlot City as well. Mm. We actually, as Live to Break, found that place. It was a hostel and all that, and there was two actually floors. The middle floor was like um, middle floor was something like a parker floor, and upstairs was like carpet and all that. Wow. But it wasn't, you know, breaking, you know, breaking. Um, it was like. Um, you know, we was actually doing more kind of, not today's moves, like we was doing windmills and all that and all that, but, mm. you know, but it had flavour to it. You understand mm. what I'm saying? It had really good flavour to it. Are you troubled Are you troubled by the, the style aspect of of breaking now? 
or do you think it's do you think it's diluted or do you think no 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 it's actually it's it's actually you know what it is is a it's not funky mm. it's not funky i mean if you check out the tracks that they play in red bull you know and big comp, you know big institutions like that and big competitions like that they don't play no funky tracks and all that funky tracks them cats can't dance to it reason why is because they're on a, a momentum tip and a balance tip moves you know mm. continuous tips I, I like what they, I like what I see. You understand what I'm saying? It's really, really good. Like air flares, that, mm. this, and all that. Mm. You know what I mean? But there's a funk part to this world, man. You understand what I'm or, saying? Or, or being in like a, I don't know, the electric ballroom, for instance. Man, or, electric. Yeah, well, electric. you can't. You can't. You can't be expected to to drive your body and do those moves in an environment such as that. Is that what you mean? No, not really. I mean, what? Um, you see, those moves weren't about back in the days. Today's moves, what you yeah. see, like air flares yeah. and that and this. Never used to happen back in the day. Mm. It weren't like that back in the days. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. What caused all that to happen is when, like Purvis said, it was like 87, 88, breaking kind of slowly died that. Everyone didn't stop. A few people kind of stopped. Mm. I personally, I personally um, slowed down around 87, 88 because... You I, got sciatica, uh, sciatica, wasn't it? I, it was, well, it actually, no, it wasn't. My sciatica problem started... After 97, 98, okay. 99. Okay. But in the um in the eighties, these kind of moves that you see today, like air flares and flares and that and this, it weren't really, really like that. It was all traditional. Mm. You understand? Mm. It was more after 85, 86, you would see like people start doing continuous head spins. Mm -hmm. Right. 84, 83, 85, I would do tick head spins. I I had probably ah, my tick head spins were fucking bad. You understand? Mm -hmm. Exactly like Kid Freeze from Dynamic Rockers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And no one can tell me I didn't have the baddest tick head spins. You understand? Tick head spins is when you tick, tick and you touch your hands, mm -hmm. not balancing on your head and yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, someone to do that back in 83, 84, continuous, maybe a few heads in America was doing that. Faster, faster. It's crazy. Yeah. 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 It was wild, man. Yeah. But watching these kids doing that, I mean... Instead of dancing, you're doing a move to find your balance and momentum. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. not really funk. I'm talking about dark circles, man, where you, you know what I mean? You know, I mean, a power move guy, I love them, but you can't, you can't break to a, you can't, you can't break to a rare groove track or a little funky James Brown track. Mind power. I was playing mind power, the instrumental. The first minute is crazy of mm -hmm. that track. The first minute of it. The first minute is fucking crazy. You know, listening to tracks like that, I can create moves. You understand really? what I'm saying? Even in my old um, interview, right, with um, All City Steve, mm -hmm. you can, I said to it, I said, I said, you can make up a move, but it has to relate with a foundation. Crazy. Right? And when you go in there clean, like that video I showed mm -hmm. you in the pub, mm -hmm. right, you go in clean, sir, and you come out clean. You understand? If you don't know how to do it, don't attempt. Don't do it. But if you're going to do it, Make a joke out of it if you fuck up. But if you're serious, mm. right, some people, they got it in their pocket, the moves. I've got yeah. the moves in my pocket, man. Yeah. I do it casual. You understand what I'm saying? Like Ray Reardon, Stephen Hendry. Mm. You know what I mean? Steve Davis. That's how it is. You understand? Pele shit. That's how it is, man. You know what I mean? And I don't hate, I don't hate <clears throat> my rivals like Dolby or Purve. Dim cats are my friends, man. You know, when we was kids and all that, that's how competitions and that's how the sayings and attitudes were. Mm -hmm. We're all big men. But me, me, I still got love and passion for it, man. I can draw this break in. I could take a 16-year-old kid out of my pocket on a dance floor. Trust me. You bring me heavyweight judges, right? No problem. I'll swear. But you know what it's all about? It's all about flavor and style. Mm -hmm. That's what makes you special. Have your own character of moves. Do a move, but make it look simple, but skanky and slick. Mm. Wise words to end with. Thank you so much. What? Alan, my, uh, my brother from another mother <laughs> yeah. to be above. <laughs> thank you so much for yeah, coming man, over. Thank you very much for oh. inviting me, man. Thank you ever so much, man. You know what this Love is? It, man. This is just getting better and better. The history, the, the tapestry of the That's Killer right. Cat podcast from television. <laughs> <laughs> OGA, you inside like the poet, baby. Super oh, peace it. up. Lift the brain inside the place. Killer Keller podcast, Ally like in was out of fashion. You know what it do. Sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Crime don't pay, but neither do they, all right? Don't talk to anyone else. I wouldn't, all right? Thank you very much, Alex. <laughs> Peace. Peace. Oh.